everybody. This episode of the Smoking Tire Podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment of all types here in one place. At Audible, you can find the largest selection of audiobooks, ranging from bestsellers and new releases, to celebrity memoirs, languages, business, motivation, and more, like original entertainment from top celebrity creators and thousands of popular podcasts. As an Audible member, you get one credit every month, good for any title in the entire premium selection. That means the latest bestsellers, the buzziest new releases, hottest celebrity memoirs, or that bucket list title you've been meaning to pick up. Those titles are yours to keep forever in your Audible library. You get full access to our popular Plus catalog, filled with thousands and thousands of audiobooks, original entertainment, guided fitness and meditation, sleep tracks for better rest, and podcasts, including ad-free versions of your favorite shows and exclusive series. All are included with your membership at Audible, so you can download and stream all you want, no credits needed. Everything you love to listen to is all in one app. Audible can be your playlist for life, and new members can always try Audible for 30 days on us. I have uh, poked around Audible recently, spent a lot of time in the car, and uh, I just wanted to be sure that my favorite types of books were there. And I found three of my favorite books from the last year in the Audible category. American Rule, One Nation Under God, and The View from Flyover Country. Those are three of my favorite books I read in the last year. All available uh, within the standard membership, no extra charge, at audible.com. Now, here's what you do. Visible, visit audible.com slash tire, T-I-R-E. That's audible.com slash tire, or text the word tire to 500-500. That's text tire to 500-500, or go to audible.com slash tire tire to get your special smoking tire rate on the special audible.com membership. We are also brought to you by Harry's razors. I have been using Harry's razors now for a very, very long time. In fact, straight up, they sponsored us like three or four years ago, sent us some razors. And then when that sponsorship ended, I literally just kept buying Harry's razors. You know, too often you choose between quality and fair prices especially in razor blades, where we know they are seemingly a ripoff at the drugstore. With Harry's, you don't have to choose. They can give you award-winning blades at factory direct prices. When I first got my Harry's razor, I was surprised at the quality of the blades, uh, especially considering how cheap they are. And when you use the blades in conjunction with Harry's lubricating products, it is a superior shaving experience. Now, you want to try it yourself, right? So for a limited time, Harry's is offering their starter set plus a free body wash for just $3 at harrys.com slash tire. That's a free starter set at harrys.com slash tire. They deliver a close, comfortable shave at a fair price with only $2 per refill cost, right? They believe in quality so much they bought their own factory so they could own every step of the blade manufacturing process. It's a great company, and I use their products even when they weren't paying me to say that. Like The last two years, this is the first Harry's ad I've done in a while, and I've had their blades, and I've shaved my face and head with them every single week. So, new customers, get down with the Harry's starter set and a free body wash for just $3 at harrys.com slash tire. That's a $16 value or more for just $3. You get a five-blade razor, weighted handle, foaming shave gel, a travel cover, and a travel size body wash. Have a grooming weekend for just $3 at harrys.com slash tire. We're also brought to you by Policy Genius. It's February, shortest month of the year. You've got just a little bit less time to deal with that to-do list. Policy Genius is here to help. They'll help you kill two birds with one stone. You can compare your home and auto insurance rates and save up to $1,055 per year by re-shopping with Policy Genius. That's money you can put toward things that you care about, whatever those things might be. Here's what you do. Go to policygenius.com, answer a, fur, 
a fur. Go to policygenius.com and answer a few quick questions about yourself and your property. Policy Genius will take it from there. They'll compare rates from over 30 top insurers from progressive to nationwide to find your lowest quotes. Then the Policy Genius team will look at all the ways you can maximize your savings, including bundling your home and auto policies. And if Policy Genius finds a better rate than what you're paying now, they will switch you over for free 99. That kind of service has earned Policy Genius a five star rating across over 1,600 reviews on Trustpilot and Google. Now, if you're worried that March is coming up and you haven't gotten this stuff done, take a deep breath, sit down at the computer, head over to policygenius.com. They'll help you make the most of the shortened month in minutes. Just reshop your home and auto insurance and save up to $1,055 over at policygenius.com. Because Policy Genius, when it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. We are, lastly, but certainly not leastly, brought to you by Keeps this week. Listen, guys, two out of three men will experience some form of hair loss by the time they are 35. I can absolutely attest to that. I went mm, 60% bald. I could have gotten Keeps to maybe keep what I had, but instead I went with the Harry's razors, and I went the rest of the way. If you're not willing to commit to full bald like me, you should probably consider keeps. More than 50 million men in the U.S. suffer from male pattern baldness, and there are only two FDA-approved medications that can prevent future hair loss. Keeps offers both. Keeps offers a simple, stress-free way to keep the hair you have. Convenient virtual doctor consults and medications are delivered straight to your door every three months. Never leave your home to get it. Treatments start at just $10 a month, and Keeps offers generic versions as well. It comes in a discreet packaging and offers proven results. Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors. And prevention is key, but treatments can take four to six months to see results, so act fast. If you're ready to take action and prevent future hair loss, go to Keeps.com slash tire to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's Keeps, K-E-E-P-S, Keeps.com slash tire to get your first month for free at Keeps.com slash tire. All right, folks, on this episode of the Smoking Tire Podcast, my pal Misha Mansoor is in the studio. Misha is uh, a fabulous guitarist. He plays in the band Periphery. More important, he is a Formula One obsessed car enthusiast who I see out in the canyons almost every weekend, either in his Lamborghini Performante or in his Porsche GT3 Touring. He can hold a conversation about cars with just about anybody, despite the fact that it has absolutely nothing to do with how he makes a living. Misha Mansoor is on the Smoking Tire podcast. It kind of defined a lot of the TV that we get now. So Of course it did. You if know? you could sit there, though, right now and watch the whole Sopranos start to finish bingeable, it's like you can't get up. I'd sit there for three days. Yeah. It's amazing. So I would say you probably would like Peaky Blinders. Right. It's not like Sopranos, except that it's like a mob thing and it's about interesting characters. I mean, and I like kind of, mob things. You're rooting for the no, anti-hero. Yeah, you're, I like you're, mob you know, things. It's, it's like, like Who said Tony's this? It was like the mob is rap for white people. <laughs> that's like, fucking funny. <laughs> that's not my joke, but I was like, that's pretty that's, good. Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. We're like, hey, look, glorified crime. Yeah. Well, that's why you that's why you see a lot of like uh, you know hip hop guys and like goombas agree on a lot of issues. <laughs> <laughs> they, you know, they both struggle they through really, a lot of stuff. Yeah, they got a lot yeah. a lot in common. You know. <laughs> oh, what's happening, man? Uh, nice to see you. It's good. It's good to see you. See, I, I got you set up with that crown and caliber love there. You did. Looking, I gotta thank you. I gotta I gotta thank you and uh, and Johnny both. For, that looks uh, good on you. Yeah, this is my loner. This is a, a Explorer Two. Was it the two sixteen five seventy? Oh, you memorized the reference. How yeah, charming! I'm trying. I'm I'm trying. <laughs> I want to be a good brand ambassador. That's uh, okay. They liked me for a while. I never learned the references. <laughs> okay, <good. laughs> I like. I feel undeserving of this. So like, Bro, I'm trying start... to do a really good yeah, job. Yeah, good. You are. Yeah. I seen your Instagram Smart. posts. You're doing a very good job. Okay, good. If Thanks. you start learning Omega Speedmaster references, you know we've lost you. Yeah, that's that's where that's where it's a, Ro a bit. Yeah, Rolex is like four to six digits. A Speedmaster. Master's like a Dewey Decimal System code, and or or like a uh, it's like an IP address. And there's all these like like uh, reissues of like the old one, so it's yeah. not an old one, but it's like the old. One, and I'm just they like, keep going forward and backward and yeah. forward and backward and they forward. Have, they and have backward. one. They have one watch, you know, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Um, but this one, this one is uh, it was a bit of a surprise because I really 
I've been lusting after a bat girl, right? Uh-huh. The, the Batman with the Jubilee. Um, and uh, That's a man's watch for those who don't know yes, about watches. It's, it's, it's just not, a nickname. It's just a nickname. Oh, yeah. I'm Google that. Um, but uh, but but I like it. You have <coughs> you have the uh, the the Pepsi. I do, which and is the same thing, just a different thing, color just different bezel, color. and it's very nice. Yeah, and and you like it, right? I do. So. It's it's effectively the same watch. Uh, so that would that be that's, that's not a the five right. digit one. You see, that's old. If, uh, what you want is a, a, a GMT Master Two on a Jubilee bracelet, uh, twenty twenty. Is it BLRO? Yeah, it's something like that. BLRO. BLRO, yeah. I think. BLRO. But, uh, um, no, they might not have one. Oh, in they, they've Calibre. got a bunch. Last I checked, because yeah. that's what I'm gonna ask for next. So, dude, you are in a danger. So you're, I think you're making mistakes right now. Yes, I'm going to buy one of them. Well, yeah, this is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. You should have circled the bowl a little more. <laughs> I know. You need to swirl around the drain a little bit before, because if you start diving into that, because you told me, I saw you post that picture of that, and that's my first watch, and I go, well, here's a problem, because that's the best watch Rolex makes, and so you're going to buy the very first watch and you that's demo. A, that's the thing, is I wanted this GMT so bad, and now I'm like, man, yeah. this is the Explorer's... Uh, battle to lose right now because this is so good <laughs> it is like like i'll get that next month and it has to be better and it has to be like five six thousand dollars better right we and also just not. bought you know 911 gt3 touring which you're like oh well, either matches nicely with that car. yeah we're, we're, either they pairs match very nicely, well but it's such a good car it's so many things you're mm-hmm. like hey, you fucked up where do you go from here yeah well you should have well, really I you should have you started about with that. fucking some frank <laughs> mullers and some I have, I, have some and, wa- I have some watches i have like my first one was an oris arctic skeleton oh, those are cool yeah those are cool i, I had some some semi-starter watch it started with a fossil that my singer gave me as most 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 of, right. most of us started with the fossil right. era, yeah, right. yeah, or Nixon, same kind of thing. Or MVMT, one of yeah, those. Yeah, yeah, companies that also made sunglasses and shit. <laughs> right, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, so like, like my singer gave it to me, and and it was a, a skeleton watch, so you could see the uh-huh. movement, you know, as chintzy as it might be, you know. That's cool. No, I, like I mean that. like like. It, but but it was really cool, it, and it was a you know a automatic mechanical watch. I'm like, wow, this just works off of kinetic energy and mathematics. That's awesome. You yeah. Know? Mm-hmm. For someone who's into math metal, the math problem. Yeah. You, should, you need like a perpetual calendar. I'm just into calendar. all the same thing. Just engineering. Just, yeah. I, I just like it all. This is why car Here's guys the like watches. Between that, uh, Can we uh, use that segue to just quickly explain to people who Misha is? Oh, I was yeah. going to do that in the intro to the show. Oh, great point. That I record at home separately that they've probably is, already heard. Is that a new thing that we do? <laughs> <laughs> Have we just started doing this, Zach? This is the Smoking Tire podcast. <laughs> this is episode 601. Are we live? 601. We've been. <laughs> We've been live. We've been, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, we, yeah, we dive into the show. Yeah, no, I like it. Yeah. At home, I'll be like, this is this awesome fucking guy, and then say some really nice things about you. So Man, they'll already know. It doesn't even matter. They'll who, know who, who am you are. I? Yeah, they'll know. They'll know. They'll also have clicked on the show that has your name in the titles. Well. Yeah, there, there we go. Yeah. It'll so be it, weird. It'd be fine. I'm but not too worried th- That's about. a dangerous first move, because you're going to end up buying it. Yeah. And, and the Batgirl's very nice, too. You're going to love that. It's 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 going to be it's gonna be a toss-up. What's your up. call? Th- those are... Well, it's it's personal taste. Yeah, it's personal taste. But I th- I look forward to your thoughts on both. after a month with both. I, I'll know. I know that I'll know after a month with both, and I'll just get whichever one I like better. And you know, That's, cost wise, dude, you see that you're you're already given <laughs> the ambassadorship as for you has just turned into you spending money. Yeah, it's dangerous. But, but I'm a good ambassador, right? You are <laughs> the best. The no. dangerous game. <laughs> well, well, well. Johnny had the same thing. I think they said like it took him three watches, and he started buying mm-hmm. them. Like, and I'm like, yeah. I resisted for um, uh, probably seven or eight, and then I and then I bought one, and uh, and then I traded it a few times. I rolled it. Oh, I rolled okay. it back in a couple of times. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, you know, that's a, that's a tactic as well. Yeah. So <laughs> but what'll ha- what happens, and then you ping pong around, just like cars. You kind of ping pong around until ultimately, I think. You kind of settle somewhere where you have a small collection, but they're all kind of the same. Like, like I'm settling in a place where all my watches are 40 to 42 millimeters and like 10 to 14 millimeters thick. Right. And they're right. all there. And the ones that are outside that I'm wearing less and thinking about selling them for ones that are kind of inside that measurement. But so you, it's very you've interesting. You've been on the quest. You figured out what the you like. The quest is you've long. Tried, you've, you've, the quest is long the quest and very is long expensive. And the quest is expensive. <laughs> so, you've been, so this this reduces the cost of the quest. Also, the, Bra- the Bramont ambassadorship is nice. And those Makes look me very focused. Cool. Those yeah, look they're very dope. Cool. Hell yeah. I, I, I like about those. this thing. World time? Love it. 
Yeah. When well, I can get on a plane and go places again, I'm really going to fuck with it. Well, see, that's the whole GMT thing. I know. Because for the longest time, I was like, it'd be super handy to have a GMT. And yeah. then I stopped traveling. Now it's so like, this this second time zone is not even Now set. you don't even want the date window anymore. You're just <laughs> like, like, every, like, day, is every day is the same. Doesn't matter. Fuck it. <laughs> Not going anywhere, but yeah. it's the same thing with cars. And I'm, I'm, I'm entering. You, so now I can talk to you as I've entered this next stage, where you know, because I have the Performante, which is like you know, just top tier. I'm just happy with the amount that you drive yours. Yeah, too many of them cars don't get driven. I, I drive. I, that's why I got them. It's a driver's car. It's How many driver. miles are on that thing now? A lot, right? I think like fourteen thousand. That's good. Yeah, yeah. I, I put, I put about, a, yeah. Uh, 10, 11,000 miles on it since I got it. I like to come out here and drive it. <laughs> it's one of the best roads in the world. And uh, and now I've got the uh, the the GT3. And that, that Performante good. was my favorite car. The whole thing with that car was, you know, I wanted, I want, I thought I'd have it for like a, a year or two, just like everything, and then you just get rid of it. And I just can't figure out what to replace it with, you know? Well, that, I mean, that and, GT3 is awful nice. Yeah, but, well, the GT3 is now my favorite car. And so if and, and gun to my head, if I have to keep one car, that's the one. That's well, the one I keep. Are you driving the Lambo substantially less? Yes. So sorry. <laughs> no, I, I still, I still, because then what happens is I'll drive it, and I'm like, oh, this car's sick. It's <laughs> and a, you're it's right, a video it game. It's a video game. It's like you go 20 miles an hour faster around a corner, and you have a conversation. You know, like, yeah, you need a car that goes the other way. You yeah. need a car where you're going 80, and you feel like you're going 150. Yes, and that is that is the the, the touring. And and you're 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 connected, and you're concentrating, and it's it's a challenge, but it's satisfying. Like, and now. I'm understanding the whole, like, you've probably been through all this. Like, everyone who's been in this scene or gone through cars understands this. But it's like, yeah, acceleration in a straight line is cool. But, like, a car that's connected, a car that kind of talks course. to you, like, that's that's the thing. Acceleration's cool to a point. To a point. You know what I mean? Like, acceleration's important if you're racing somebody. Right. If you're not <laughs> actually racing against somebody, all that matters is the car feels pretty fast. Yeah. yeah. And and more than it can carry speed, right? Uh, and and you know to that point, I'd been shopping for a GT3 for like a year, but believe it or not, I was cross shopping it with a Civic Type R, because that was the other well, car, which well, I know is so I, weird. I mean, that's but, weird. But it's that's a weird move. because it's because it's manual, and that thing can carry speed around a corner. And I could beat it up. There's you know, so many cars I mean, that match so, that criteria. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 I'm with Zach. Them, I'm with Zach. I, I rented that car in love. No, I know. I know. It's so too. weird. Yeah, it looks horrible. It's embarrassing to get out of. But I rented one when I when I visited my parents, and I was just so blown away. That car can do everything. And uh, I mean, it can. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a very, for a Civic, it's a very nice car. Don't get me wrong. But somebody who's got GT3 money... Isn't going. I'm gonna get this GT3 or I'm gonna get a Civic. Well, I had to find the right GT3. That's the thing. It's like I was getting it used. Was your GT3 like, forty two thousand dollars? I mean, no. What, 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 but, but my but my calculation is always the same. It's like it's not about the cost of the car. It's how much am I gonna lose on this? Right. And of course. You lose money very in, on yeah, both. Money in, money out. For yeah. Sure. And 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 that's where they're actually very similar. I mean the. The consumables are obviously less on the Civic Type. Uh, yeah, I know tires weird... for a GT3 are expensive. Yes, they are. But, but the move for LA, though, by the way, I don't know. I don't know if you've gone through a set of tires yet. The move is to not run Cup Twos on um, your GT3. So they've been they've been really good. Your uh, Cup Twos? Yeah, really? I, took, I took them to the track. I, I took them out to uh, uh, to Streets of Willow, and like it's still on the same tires. <laughs> like, How many miles? Uh, I put probably 2,500, 3,000 oh. miles on it. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, not that many miles. No, when you, they'll be done by five. Yeah, but like <laughs> in the Performante, wow. I went I went through tires in like two months. Uh, the, the, the Corsas. The Corsas. Yeah, the Corsas. Just, and your, and Performante is a heavy car. Yeah. It's a heavy car. Those front, those front tires got, drive. got wrecked. Yeah. It got absolutely, it was, it was mainly the fronts. They're doing a lot of work, though. Yes. Yeah. yeah. They, are. they, they are. do more work, and you got you got weight on the front because the differential that you don't have with the 911. And, yeah. 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 It's uh. You it's, know what's surprisingly good on tires? Like a Ferrari 430 really? is like oh, yeah. super good on tires. Really? Understeers like a motherfucker because it's got like 235s in the front, but it's really, really good on tire wear. <laughs> yeah, it's surprising. So so that's a that's thing is like this, when, when I took it to but the track. But still, really? It's Type R? I'm still on that. Type R or well, GT3? What, what drew you to it? Um, the fact that it could do everything. The fact that it could be like a sick daily, 
Uh, it looks horrible. It really does. But it's comfortable. Like, it rides True. really well. For a car with 20s, you're right. It does. And, and, ride and, is and the good. first thing I would do is I would put 18s on it and uh, PS4S. Yeah, and I think it would be good, the perfect uh, car. Um, wheel for that. I don't really care, like, how the car looks that much, like, in that price range. It's just, like, if the experience is that good. Mm. I just thought it was a fantastic manual. It was a very fun, easy car to drive. That's true. Um, and, you know, in that range... There are there's obviously a ton of other cars, but they all have like signi- significant caveats. Like this would have arguably as much space as my SUV. Yeah, so and, oh, I, and I forget stuff. you've already got a Cayman. Yeah, all right. Well, I got rid of that too. But I you are so had you had, had a Cayman. Yeah, yeah, all right, yeah. so because a Cayman is like where I, you know what I mean? Cayman's or, incredible. Or like, uh, yeah. I get. I get, I don't know. They, I mean, objectively, it is a really good car. Like they they handle well. They of course, it well. is. Like it's just. They had well. They had their cooling issues in the beginning, but then it's also just they were asking over sticker for so long. Every dealership was, yeah. and that was kind of obnoxious. But I figured, I figured I have friends. Maybe I could get one at sticker somehow. No, and you then probably I could. Lose a, then I wouldn't lose a dollar, <laughs> right? You know, uh, and and I was like, it wouldn't be a long term thing. It'd be like. Have it for a year. Take it to the track. That's take what it. You said take about the Lambo right. like three years ago. Yeah, but it's just there's just nothing better. Like the only car that I would replace that with would be a 720s Spider, but I don't want to. Mm. I don't want to own a McLaren. I have enough friends that own McLarens yeah. that tell me I don't want to own a McLaren. That's true. <laughs> what so, you want is to figure out how to get me and Johnny to get you a McLaren press car. That's that is exactly. <laughs> yeah, now what that you figured out the watch yes. scam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's th- that's step one. Podcast number two. Dear is McLaren, <laughs> my friend Misha is good at guitar. <laughs> <laughs> guitar. Really yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I, I think, I think that's the biggest problem with that. It's like actually owning it. But yes, for a week, that is probably the best car you could have. Sidebar: Did you see uh, what was it? Drag Times or one of them guys put up on Instagram, McLaren seven six five LT on a race gas tune and downpipes. And uh, drag slicks ran an eight nine at oh one fifty seven. Oh my god! Eight nine. So you just like, buy wow. that car. Are cars too you, fast now? <laughs> yes, yeah, like, they are. Go <laughs> read my new story. My story in Road and Track this month uh, uh, about the seven six five LT, which is says in a dozen different ways that it is very irresponsible to just sell this to people. You know, I'd, it's an eight second car. I've, 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 <laughs> I've driven a seven twenty S. Which and is a I high never thought. Car. I never thought like, hey, this needs to be faster. Right. You know? At no point. I remember I was at speed on the highway and accelerating. I was like, I've never felt a car accelerate at speed yeah. the way that this is just just thrust. Yeah. At all times, any speed, whatever. I'm like, cool. So we're good on that. And then they're like, oh yeah, let's make shorter gearing <laughs> and more horsepower. The short gearing. Like I get it. You got it. You want to up the price. So if they if they did everything they did on the seven six five LT. And left the gearing alone, nobody would have been like, "Well, they didn't shorten the gears." Like nobody right, would yeah. have said that yeah, yeah. shit. But they did. So when you have when you are bragging about in gear acceleration that is fifteen percent faster than a seven twenty S, it's like that that kind of improvement. No, no car manufactured gets a fifteen percent improvement. A fifteen percent is enormous percentage over a car that already ran a nine. What the fuck. But this is what Porsche has figured out, and McLaren is just like, nope, we're just going to go, Well, they're go, just going go. into fucking crazy town. And and then this begs the question, which I'd love your guys' take on, is like, where's the limit? What happens? <coughs> there's going to be something that, there's got to be something that happens. But, but you see, We're like, almost at zero. Zero I'm, to 60 <laughs> and zero. Right? Yeah. <laughs> we're, in the, we're in the one second you close range. close the door and you're at 60 immediately. Bro, how much, how long, you, how much, you want to bet... I'll bet you a Rolex Explorer <laughs> that in fucking the next 20 years we have a car that is zero to 60 in zero point, zero point. something. I, I, I don't ti- even want to bet against If tires can do you. it, they'll do it. The car manufacturers will do it. Because we were talking about this the other day. Like They need a number that is either lower than the than the predecessor's number or higher. It has to yeah. go faster top speed, make more horsepower, or get to a speed at a quicker time. Otherwise, the customer's <clears> like, well, why would I buy the new one? What's the fa- What do you think the fastest quarter mile is that was ever run on drag radials? Like, not on big balloony, you know, zero PSI Hoosiers. Like, can you do that on any, like, has a GTR or something, or one of those, like, 2,200 horsepower or those, like, joints? like, Huracans or R8s are, like, tw- like yeah. 2,200 Cause like Yeah, because they, they, one of them's running, like, the 7s, I think. There's yeah. a GTR, like, a full interior GTR that does 7s. But, like, Here those cars have, like, built engines, like... 
Holy shit, what? someone ran a 586 <laughs> on radial tires? Good God. It's a, in a re- what looks like a rear-wheel drive car, no less. That's I mean, a, that's like a, it's a, a C7, C7 it's a Corvette. Corvette. That's like a funny car. The C7 funny car is Fuck what it me. is. That's, that's sort of blurring the line. Here's it's a just... guy who ran 648 <laughs> on 275 radials. Wow. But these cars would be the worst cars to drive. Of course. So, like, like the thing is that... When 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 Tesla's doing their like 1.9 second or whatever, you, you'd imagine that car is drivable right. elsewhere. Right. You know. No, and I think an EV will be the one that does of it. Of course, an EV will do it. Of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But and it'll probably be Elon Musk, just so they can brag about it because they'll probably, need a thing. Probably. They'll need a hype. They'll have the but but where where does this end? <laughs> is my question. Yeah, I mean, I you know, it's I, already it's already too crazy. It's already Absolutely. too crazy. You see the video, the Tycon going through the front of the dealership? No. Oh, my God. It's in my app mentions on Twitter. It looks like a, uh, a British kid, you know, skinny little fucking white kid in a baggy sweatshirt like in his tw- 20s. I think I hear English accents in the background. Is it on a test drive? Or? It, it, no, like, it, kid sits in Tycon in showroom, hits gas, and drives out the fucking window. It's in my right because the car's on. Oh, Russian, right? A Russian vlogger. Sorry, I thought it was Eng- I thought I heard English accent. Yeah, it's it's that part vlogger. of the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, the video is really funny. <laughs> Ooh, that's not good. Yeah, wow. no, it's ugly. And look at that headline. Was it strictly for the clicks? That's the other problem. Oh that man. Is a big problem. <laughs> oh man, what if you did that for the fucking clicks? Because it would work. Because we're talking about it. Well, I guess. I mean, I, how are you gonna? There's an equation where this makes sense. That's true. It's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, it's it's unfortunate. Imagine that unfortunate. conversation with yeah. the dealership. Like, here's what I want to do. Yeah. I'm going to pay for the window. I'm gonna, because there's a lot of people, like, there's several Russian YouTubers I've seen recently that, like, drop G63 from helicopter right, and right. explodes. And, like, they have the money, then they just Well, they've been do the doing that kind thing. of stunts here, yeah. too. Yes. I filled a pool with fucking jello. You know, no, yeah, no. That it, kind it's of that. Stuff. Yeah. And now, if you already have a billion dollars, yeah. that, that's yeah. what it is. You know, so you can get the clicks for it. I mean, uh,. Dude's, I mean, look dude's at posing but in front of it. Pose, Come on. Look at his pose. No, that's Photoshop. He's posting world. Yeah, yeah. But, like but the still. Headlight, but even for him to do that after the fact is kind of like, oh, yeah, sure. check this out. No, wait. But he's po- that's f- p- photoshopped from somewhere else. But is that the that's the center that's card a, for the video? That's the Correct. thumbnail. So he, he made the video. Yeah, he made the thumbnail. <laughs> Oh, this is the guy that uh, lit his GT63 on fire after you said it was unreliable. So yeah, he's the, okay, oh, he does this. As oh, the information right, rolls in, right, I think right, that he did right. it for the clicks. Yeah, I think you're. I think that theory- had over 4.4 million views at this time of writing. So it's probably oh, at 10 shit. million right yeah, now. Yeah, baby. The defense's theory holds water. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely does. Yeah, I it think says, you're right. Uh, in the video, he was relatively calm after the accident, so that kind of smells like uh, it's probably planned. Smells like Russian spirit, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> yeah, the less successful. They don't have Russian it. spirits. They don't have you're rules there. Vodka? <laughs> vodka? vodka, vodka, Russian spirits. I don't know. I don't want to generalize, but I have some Russian friends, and there's definitely like you know two classes of living there. Oh. and if you're in that upper class, you could kind of just do whatever. These yeah. rallies we used to do back in the day were full of cats like that. Yeah. Yeah. Just And they come out here and they wait like what what the cops stop you here. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh the police uh, you you talk to them or you just hand them the money. Right, exactly. How much money you hand them? You <laughs> just hand put them it on my tab. 20,000? 30,000? These dudes Wasn't would roll around like... with 40, 50 Gs in the glove box. It was nothing. It's crazy. Yeah, uh, my uh my business partner who's Russian, he's got like oligarch cousin he's like a dude drives a 911 and just, just in the wrong lane just yeah. driving against traffic it's just he just drives it like it's like GTA it's like yeah. it's his little playground Kid, it's like I own the police I'm doing my no, own no 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 I mean that now. that is that is it right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you <laughs> but like uh that's that that's literally it it's like yeah. they're not going to pull him over and if if some idiot does like he'll just show him the the, the card or right. whatever yeah. that's what yeah. our homies tell us about Dubai if you're oh, like really? if you're like an an Emirati who's like you know got like a two digit license plate you know laws he, they also said there's no like if you're a tourist there like all accidents are your fault 
Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Anything that goes wrong on the highway is the fault of the tourist and not the local wow. in that particular country. That's good country. to know. I haven't yeah, been it's there. good to know. Be I careful been... when driving. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when JF, before that trip, told me how that they totally frowned on smoking there and that it was like I'd be like kicked out of the country because I smoked cigarettes at the time and he just wanted to, me to not smoke. Oh, so and he, he just told said, me it was like, like, like no, super, super, <laughs> listen, it's super shady. You can't smoke cigarettes there. And he had all these people fucking go along with this lie. And then I got there and they're like, chain smoke. Smoking in the airport. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> Bullshit. You can't make a lie up like that when the whole population is gonna <laughs> fucking They're gonna catch you. immediately. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Oh uh, man. So wow. GT three instead of a type R. I think you made the right choice. Yeah, oh, I think God, I think yes. I was Did looking. you seek out Miami Blue? Yes. Yeah. And when I was color. looking for a touring, I, I wanted the touring, as Johnny calls it, the circumcised. Porsche. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, kind of. Kind of. So if you're a Jew, if you're if you're Jewish, I get it. I'm Jewish. You're Jewish. Yeah, He's that's Jewish. A, that's, we can make that joke. Hey, look, yeah, especially if it's a good enough standard for you're porn, Jewish, it's a good enough standard. German for car. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's yeah. a German Jewish joke. Yeah. Oh, it looks good with the with the white with the Dude, silver wheels so and good. the and the silver uh, yep. window trim. That works. Yep. So, so I was great. I was actually saying the the you have that um, that winged. GT3 Miami blue one here, right? And that one's actually the, the spec I was looking for, which is with the, you think the she silver wants to trade. No, 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 because I changed my mind after I got this. <laughs> really, uh, this is what I call the the Chris Harris look because it doesn't have any tint. It's got the the chrome, the silver wheels. Yeah, All Chris Harris is like offended by window tint. Yeah, he? yeah, he's and anti tint. He's anti like to a degree. I didn't even realize. I, I heard him <laughs> talk about like how because there's a natural tint to all windows, like you'd actually paid extra to not even have that layer. Of like a little bit of green or whatever that's there to have the the true clear glass. I mean, yeah, because your side windows are very slightly darker than the windshield. Right, right. But then, then you know, you add to me super that's tint. untinted. Right. To him, that's offensive. So <laughs> apparently, uh, he he went and paid for that. But it's good enough. But uh, you know, I, I don't know Chris Harris, but I imagine if he saw my my car, he would like it, and that's all that matters. You know, I more think than he'd be me personally liking it. offended by it, he'd call you a. Cunt. Yeah, <laughs> and, 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 and then I could die happy. If that that's pretty much that's pretty much end game for me right there. So no, that's a good look. Uh, I understand <laughs> the like certain colors really work well with really crystal clear windows, mm -hmm. yeah. greens, blues. It kind of um, has a classic, and it's also because it's a nine eleven, and it, you know it's kind of it, like it just harkens back to the more classic era where you didn't sure. have where you yeah. had chrome trim, where you had clear windows, you weren't like. Tinting and yeah. putting black you know wheels on. You should never do what? tint a soft top. <laughs> Why? See? No. Because like sometimes if you're driving a soft top car and you want to put the top down and you put the windows up, oh. it sort of sucks, you know. But you do it and it's kind of nice in there. But now imagine it with tinted windows. Well, doesn't right. that look silly? That does look very silly. Right? I mean, I, you know, I have never owned a convertible before. It's not bad. I've only had one. It was kind of nice. You know, I think I think if you live in California, it makes sense. It, you, yeah, in California, or even like Objection. any, huh? Objection. Really? What? You wouldn't yeah. do you wouldn't do the convertible? No, I Why? don't like I don't like them. I think uh, they're too loud on the highway when the when the tops up. I think they look bad when the color of the top fades, which it almost always does. Hmm. Um, I think it ruins the lines of the car. They're getting better at it. Like the ca the Porsche we had, the cab, like. That top was really tight. It fit really I was going to well. say, your gripes do not apply to new, nice cars. You're talking about old, shitty convertibles. Mm, I think it's still there. I think I still like the way the metal looks. When smooth what about, metal, what about yeah, the hard tops? Like, like McLaren 720S Spider. No, I that think, I think is fine. Because then you're keeping a similar material and shininess that like the paint on the roof matches the paint on the, on the hood. And it looks and the good with the top up good, and down. And it matches the shape of the car. Yeah. And then it, that's like that's fine. Totally. I'm picturing your, your car you're talking about, and it's from the 80s. So, right? <laughs> no, I've driven some recent like I drove like like he's saying the new 911 cabs like and even as far back as like 10, 12 years ago 911 cabs yeah. are pretty tight. Boxsters mm. are great. Uh, dude, I had a SL500 a 2001 that sure it like lacked a little bit of chassis rigidity. It did have a removable hardtop also, which which I like. never came off. No, it's half the what, time. What year, half the time. What, what year was that? Two thousand and one. Yeah, so like that's a twenty. The boxy one. Old car. Yeah, the boxy one. Yeah, so it's gonna have a little flex. They, yeah, yeah, they which is fine. Different. That's fine. Yeah, but like, in it was nice. Yeah, like for just cruising around, <clears throat> it was cool. You get the sun. 
I stand by or my Or get story. yourself hey, a, you stand, you still get a little target roof car. Hey, man, you were almost a, you're about to buy a Civic Type R, and that's your story. And that's that's fun. my story. And you can have that story. I think it's fun that I was cross-shopping the two. You guys are offended by it, which I love. I'm not offended. <laughs> I'm just confused. What does chat Don't think? Don't confuse. What is the chat thing? No. Uh, d- listen, oh, you're, yeah. Yuri from that, uh, Straight Pipes. Yeah, his favorite convertible is a Prowler. Gary yeah. from Straight Pipes <laughs> is own. the only person who's allowed to comment in the free By side <laughs> we take it seriously. Well, we, we, ignore the, we ignore the comments. The on right, the right column doesn't get doesn't get addressed. Oh, only yeah. the yellow and blue boxes. That's right. You pay for your questions. Yeah, like you know the like the levels of threat of terror, the colors. Right. right There's right. also the levels of 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 gift. If you see a pink box over there, we go straight to that pink box. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yeah. Let's see some pink boxes. Yeah, get in that pink box life. Are yeah. we are we supposed to answer questions or is that at the Not end? Not like right now. Not right but now. We can eventually. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll answer if the pink ones. If they're like good, if we, they're good. We we appreciate the donations to get to that VIP section of the questions, but sometimes we uh, determine that it is more in the interest of doing a good show <laughs> than it is in the interest of addressing that one person's question for several thousand people to listen to. That's true. Uh, not that we don't want to be helpful. You won't but, always yeah. get laid in the VIP section. Right. Sometimes right. you just get an expensive that, vodka soda. That's a, that's a good way to put it. Sometimes there's sex in the champagne room. There is, I've uh, heard. Unless, you know, you've been having, you know, you've been going in the champagne room over and over and over and over. And you keep asking what kind of champagne you should buy <laughs> for, for $22. $20. Not speaking from experience, of course. Every, every oh, boy. So it's something yeah. to be aspired to, but not expected. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, the uh, the roads in Texas, like the open kind of country roads. Yeah. Is there? Do they have the uninterrupted like drives like we have here? Like you could do thirty miles in the middle of nowhere. Like we've got that road. Do they have that, or is it all just in between farms kind of stuff? Um, I mean, the roads that I'll take my car out on are like, yeah, like they're they're out there. There's there's they're the ones around like Dallas that I used to do that were just like farms and it would just be like straight ninety degree yeah. turn straight <laughs> ninety degree and it's like this is a corner yeah yeah <laughs> like it's that's, nothing. It's also north and central Florida. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. there's roads. nothing like nothing <laughs> like what what you got here in in Angeles Crest, which is a really special. That's we're a very, very special road. We're very spoiled. You are very spoiled. Did you go up there since the snowstorm? Yeah, I I I, uh, sh- I shipped my cars <laughs> out here so that I could uh, so I could drive because you can drive all all, all year, year long. It's the best. It's the uh, you Even know? though you can drive all year, you can actually find snow up Angeles Crest, which, yeah, and, is, which and, is a fun adventure. And, uh, and I went up this morning, and there was on the oh, way, really? there was there was water, and there wasn't snow on the road, but there was uh, on the sides. Oh, it's Friday. Was Jay Ryan's cars and it coffee was, today? That's where I went. That's oh, where I went. was it awesome? Uh, yeah, it's always it's chill. It's, it's chill. Usually chill. It's a it's a chill affair. I don't really care for car shows, so like if I'm in if if I'm in Austin or whatever, like that's where I'll go to a car show. Uh, or in Dallas when I lived in Dallas that's what that's what you would do yeah because there's not a whole lot of driving but here there's driving so you know well, a car show that's 40 miles up a mountain road in the middle of nowhere on a weekday yeah is going to draw a certain subset of people I like that which subset is a good of people. subset of people yep that's exactly right it was a space traditionally occupied by the race service guys as cars and coffee over here on uh, Wednesdays. Oh, yeah. You know them guys? Right, right. No, I don't. The race service guys. It's a <clears throat> like a marketing, uh, a car themed marketing agency that also kind of like does builds and makes videos, okay. and it's sort of like DL partner owned by Daniel Ricardo, um, but oh. also Ryan Turk is involved. And uh, wow, and is Forsberg still involved? Mm, I don't think. I so. think, I think Forsberg might have moved on, but some interesting artists and interesting car builders, and they've got kind of a. Uh, location. Uh, oh, that's Daniel's uh, <clears throat> new 720. Yeah, yeah. He's well, with McLaren. <clears throat> yeah. I'm he pretty went from sure, a Renault to a McLaren. By the way, I'm upgrade. pretty sure Daniel's 720 is the fucking press car I was driving. Oh, really? <laughs> I think so. Lo- <laughs> I think that just means wherever Daniel goes, a 720 <laughs> appears from the marketing fleet and he gets to drive it. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, they got to outfit him with a car. but they, Not uh, to shit on Daniel Ricardo. He seems like he's awesome. Yeah, I, I I I fucking love him. I love F1. I love Daniel Ricardo. I'm stoked he's at McLaren. Um, I don't know if you guys follow or if F1 talk is appropriate here, but 
Um, we follow to a certain degree, I'd say. I think I'd say lightly, lightly follow. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a fan of it. Yeah. It's just there's things to do in the day. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. and and it's and it's you know arguably a lot more boring these days. I still like it for the drama. I tell I tell everyone it's the most high tech soap opera of all yeah. time. Yeah, that's very um, funny. Yeah, uh, Drive to Survive will back that up. Yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I like watching Drive to Survive more than I like watching the races. <laughs> yep. Straight up, for because sure. I like because I want to be I I I like the, how they craft a story. Yeah, and the race itself if you're not a nerd isn't always a story yeah and f1 isn't always uh, visually exciting because it's not like there's like constant passing and battling and whatever that's, a, pro- that's yeah. a problem with it they're gonna fix that it was supposed to be fixed this year but covid They've been so. supposed to fix that no but that's- there's an actual regulation change there's like a big big change to the car they're gonna be way less arrow so that's what all the drivers have been calling for too yep. like we've interviewed yep. a couple of them they can't they can't yeah. uh, they can't follow yeah, they they can't follow each other. There's just too much grip in it. The cars don't move around. Like you know, drivers like, are just kind of bored well, by what they have to do out there. The cars are so big, it's that there's just not a lot of space on some of these tracks. So you go to Suzuka or whatever. Yeah. But then also they are so aero dependent. I mean, these things are on rails now, right? There's yeah. no movement. But the cost of that is that up to five seconds behind, the air is completely messed up. And when you wow. get within a second of the car in front, you're you're Tires are overheating, your your engine's overheating, your brakes are overheating, everything's overheating, and you have no grip. The air is disturbed for five yep. seconds. And wow. and especially in that last second. And so what happens is you get into this this realm that's really hard, like they can catch up, and then unless you're substantially right. faster, you're just stuck there. They they have DRS to, you know, the drag reduction reduction system to try to compensate for that, but doesn't always do that, doesn't always work. So these cars will actually be slower, as I understand it, because they won't be as grippy. Mm-hmm. But it should require a lot more driver skill to not spin That's out. That's great. And to, it, it, the racing should come back. There's cost caps and all that stuff. Mercedes just doesn't win every championship again, right. you know? Or Red like, Bull for a while. Like, yeah, <laughs> I mean, we had Alexander Rossi on the show uh, like two weeks ago. And he was pretty much like, look, you know, not – and I don't think he meant it in a totally bitchy way, but he was like, look, there's – if you're you're either in one of the teams that's spending money at this level, yep. or you're not, you know, it, it's it's kind of true. But then at the same time, like Ferrari spends more than anyone, and they they had like one of the worst. Well, they cheated. Well, <laughs> well you can spend more and fail, yep. but you can't succeed without spending a certain amount. Yeah. Is mm-hmm. what they're saying. Um, though, it's not a guarantee though, of though success, Aston but Martin, it's an entry through the door. Or Racing Point, which became Aston Martin. Which is what, Strollin Sons? Yep, yep, Strollin Sons. <laughs> Strollin Sons. Strollin Sons Racing. Uh, um, I they... don't think Blipshift will sell that shirt either, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is Strollin Sons. Let's, uh, everyone kind of knows it, but but he's, his Stroll's showing up, so it's, so it's fine. And he, they've got Vettel, but like uh, they, they, they've done a lot with very little. So they're kind of the opposite end of that. But you're right. Like I can't wait for their F1 technology to trickle down to Aston Martin's road cars. <laughs> yeah. And some aesthetic uh, designs as well. Some, some good cars to drive. You know, I've, Just the lipstick, right? <laughs> I've, I've only ever driven one Aston. It was like my buddy's like older. I don't even know what it was. V8 Vantage or something mm-hmm. like that. Those are I good. Don't, I don't know. Uh, they're all right. It felt heavy and loose. And like, yeah, they yeah are, but they're that good. sounds right. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. They it the, sounded great. If, you, if you expect an, an Aston V Vantage to do things that a Porsche will do, or even a Z06 will do, you'll probably be disappointed. But that's but the it, thing is, like, it looks like it would do that. Uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah. Astons are British Corvettes, not British right. Porsches. Well, this is what I learned. Yeah. But like, it would be sick if they became a bit more. It would, know, like, but it would take a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, and a lot more, uh, and a refocus of their of their energy to. To, to certain things. Wait, I rode I rode in that uh, DBS Super Legera, which is anything but Super Legera, but it was yeah, it was awesome. very heavy. That it was, was cool. that was a cool car. Well, they make cool cars. Yeah, that, that, their that, cars that aren't like, you like could hustle it a little bit. Yeah, their cars aren't like bad, but if you look at a DBS Super Legera, which you're talking about the orange one you were in or the blue one, the with blue me. one, the coupe, right? The coupe. Which I had a coupe and a convertible. Yeah, that thing was like. Three hundred plus thousand dollars. Yeah, but it'll be one hundred and thirty in like two years. Totally, so. <laughs> but 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 dollar for dollar, three hundred plus grand yeah. in Porsche land yeah. is or GT two RS. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So and 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 so the priorities are just different. That's also FA tribute to land. Yeah, right. It is. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 tough competition for Aston. Yeah. yeah, all of all of these all of these realms now have very tough competition, and it's largely due to Porsche just. 
being yeah. in every single and, ev- and everything else getting really good too yeah. Yeah. and car companies that don't have enough money to constantly innovate and or have to get power trains from other suppliers and yeah. shit like that you know they're going to get left behind by the real innovators you know what i'm i'm kind of curious to see is like if the uh the the c8 z06 is going to be like a disruptor I think it's gonna be hot as fuck. It's Ultimate gonna, it's disruptor, be smokes yeah. and fools. I think. Right. That's yeah. what. That's kind of what I'm badass. thinking. Like, I haven't driven the the regular. One. You guys have driven it. Yeah. Look, I mean, to be a disruptor though, yeah. like, I don't know what it would take to get, like, I like, I don't hmm, rephrase. Is was the GT350 a disruptor? It'll be that for Corvettes. It might get a few people out of other cars, but it won't totally turn someone off to buying the not the next GT3 or the next whatever. Well, because you have to you have to wonder like they're they're rumoring like eight hundred thousand horsepower, something crazy. It like won't that. matter. It doesn't, won't, matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's matter. way too much. Whatever it is, uh, uh, flat plane crank V8, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. What what'll, what'll do it is it'll have to feel really expensive. Right, but. So, so what I'm asking you is, you know, do you think that that car has it in it? You know, I know that like this one's geared more towards the GT though? older crowd, whatever. What the, is it? The, the it being speed or the it being uh, handling? Handling. Oh yeah, for uh, sure, and, absolutely. And the speed we know, we, we already this. No, no, no the, but this I guess when I say fast. speed, I mean cornering speed. I yeah. mean all, road because like I drove a C8 on the track and it it was soft. It had GT suspension and whatnot, but I was like. It, the bones of that thing right. and the balance and the way that where the engine's placed, like all that stuff, it's as usual going to punch above its weight class, which right. is what Corvette has been doing for 20, 30 years. And now you have the physics. It, it, it now is on an equal playing field in terms of physics with the engine in the middle. So if they bolt on the right suspension parts and they tune the chassis the way GM can, which is really good, yeah. like it is going to chase down really expensive stuff, but it's never going to feel as expensive inside or when you close the door or any of those other things right. as the competition above it, which has always been true. I mean, the Z06... Uh, a C6 Z06 yeah. chased down really exactly. expensive stuff, too. Exactly. Like a yeah. C6 Z06 versus a uh, 06 Gallardo and an 06 430, the lap times were the same. and, and Yeah, you know. but it's a fundamentally different experience. Now you got the mid-engine car. Of course it is. Of course right. it is. Now you got it's... something that will actually be comparatively, like as you drive it, should feel similar. As you said, it's but maybe... It... Scale like relative to the cost. If we're talking about something, they'll be like one twenty to one fifty. I'm guessing, yeah, like in that range. Mm-hmm. And it's chasing down the F8, you know, for a third of the price. Like it, it might, yeah, it that's, might. That's a that's a lot of money to spend on a Ferrari badge, you know. It is, but it but is, there, man. But when you walk up to it, it says Ferrari. When you look yeah. at it, it says Ferrari. Yeah, you get in it. Which I mean, actually, I think the C8 uh, uh, interior is more comfortable than the F8s. I mean. Uh, just on, uh, in terms just of in terms actual of comfort, comfort. Yeah, yeah, I think actually, ergonomics yeah. are good and stuff. As long as you're not interacting with the, <laughs> the, the little <laughs> I, don't mind I don't mind the wall of buttons. <laughs> the wall yeah, of I, kinda, I think that's kind of a cool idea, but... The wall of buttons. Yeah, the wall of buttons. The gray wall of buttons. <laughs> the gray wall of buttons that yeah. separates you from your passenger. Yeah. So that they can't control anything. The chastity <laughs> belt, I call it. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> It's yeah. like, wait a minute! You removed the shifter, but put something else to keep me from getting roadhead. Yeah. yeah. Very good <laughs> Meanwhile, Ford Jaguar has figured this out. The puck yeah. goes away. Ford, Ford, Ford has a shifter that disappears as if it had a pair of pants. You know? <laughs> they know what's happening. Yeah. yeah. No. Um. <laughs> no, but I see your point. And now that it's mid-engined, obviously, I think it's I think it's narrowed. Um, and although Zach really liked the F8, and I like the F8 as well, I think the F8 is a really stagnant product. Um, we have a 458 Spider here at WCCS that I didn't take out and thrash in the canyons, but I get in it and move it around a lot. And to be perfectly honest with you, at anything less than 90% throttle, it's exactly the same as yeah. the current 458, and it costs 180 grand. Or the current, excuse me, F8. F8 yeah. And it costs like a third. And the interior doesn't even look that different. It's no. not. It's exactly yeah, it's like the same. It's the same. It's exactly closer. the same. Unless you spend 4,500 bucks on the car play. Um, yeah, but- <laughs> right. You, which you, I think you might even be able to retrofit on right. this one. Yeah. But um, so I think you're, you think you're right. It'll get closer, but... I think it still won't be built quite nice enough for mm. a lot of the people that can afford these nicer status symbols. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. I guess you know what they'll sell a bunch to people in their like 
or 30s. Yeah. They'll sell a bunch sell, to guys like me. Because I don't yeah. care about the brand at all. At all. I want, like I said, I was cross shopping a Porsche and a Honda mm. Civic. Like, yeah. It, I, like, to me, it's all driving experience. And I think they've sold a lot of a regular C8s, uh, non Z06s, to folks like this. Yeah. Like Amelia. You know the dude, uh, that dude Brian, that's whose C8 I borrowed uh, for a video. Like th- these are like you know young, uh, cool people that probably wouldn't have bought a C7 at all. Yeah, you know, yeah. and that that that's the <clears throat> that's the success on there, and like they really wanted to shake the, the Corvette image, and I think they did a good job. The question is, can they a- attract the people who are upmarket from them? Yeah, which I think remains to be seen. I think if they probably could get people test drives. Or to experience it. Sure. I remember one of the first times I ever even considered uh, a, a C7 Z06 was I did a track day. I had a 488 at the time. I did a track day that, that Ferrari oh, yeah, owned. You, you owned a 488 yeah. for a second, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah. Well, we talked about it the last time. I forgot. Yeah, I, had a, yeah. I, had a, I have a whole thing with Ferrari, but I, I, I also have a whole thing where I'm like, maybe I should get back in one. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's something about Just that. Just buy one used and exist outside the ecosystem. Yeah, a 458. Just get a four five eight, bro. And not three twenty eight <laughs> FTW. Get a stick Ferrari. That's what's up. That's so, what I mean by getting you getting a car where it feels faster than it is. Yeah, well, like like a four thirty with a stick or something like get that. that. They're, They're very nice. expensive, but yes, they are. And they get they get more and more every day. There was a point where you could get them for like one fifty, and I think they're like closer to two hundred. Two, like it's like an eighty thousand dollar premium over yep. an F one car. Is. It is. Yes. How much is the conversion? The parts don't exist anymore. The factory parts. So there's anyone who's doing a conversion, there's is, a company that does that. They're uh, the company in Texas. If you're talking about, I think I forget. I forget. Don't what give them your money. Don't give them don't, ever. Really? Yes. Uh-huh. They that that company. They did do a couple of conversions using some factory parts. They told me that that they were running out of factory parts, uh-huh. and I've got I got calls from other people who found out they were using homemade parts. And I also know that that person who runs that shop has a history of making both cars and money disappear. So okay, well that's good to know because that was that was the that was the next nah, step was just, just a regular F one. <laughs> <clears throat> don't not no. there anyway. And and from what I gather, the factory parts don't exist. Oh shit. Yeah. So the thing I was thinking of, which is kind of crazy, I'd love your take on this, was if I were to get rid of the Performante and get into an A12 super fast. They're fun as fuck. It's a completely different car, yeah. completely different experience. Yeah. It's like, like I have, I, I should probably test drive one, but like, as they're bad shit. I, yeah. I've heard, yeah. I've heard. <laughs> you know what that is? That's a, uh, that's the DBS Superleggera, but it turns like, a, lot, a little better. Yeah. yeah, imagine the DBS, but with the 488 steering rack in it. Right. That's basically yeah. what you're and getting. An NA motor that makes more horsepower. 800 horsepower. Yeah. That's yeah. that's what I'd be buying. Yeah. It's NAV12. Maybe one of the last that very Ferrari gnarly. is responsible for, you know? Very, very gnarly car. Yeah. Uh, and it's, like, kind of not quite a GT, not quite a supercar, mm-hmm. somewhere, which is a criticism for some people, but it's kind of like, hmm. No, they're cool different. as shit. And now that, like, now I have the GT3, and that's just, like, my forever car. I don't even care about the 992 that's coming out. Like, that car just, whew. Just makes me feel oh, happy right yeah, here. Yeah, you can just have one of those forever. Forever. Done. I'll just put yeah. all the miles on it, don't yeah. care, and I'll always be happy. I can sell everything. I'll sell my daily, <laughs> sell, sell. you know. You can daily that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I do. I do. That's the thing. I, I drove, I, I have a BMW X3 as my daily, and I gave it a pity drive the other day because I'm like, oh, man, I haven't touched this car because I just take the touring out whenever. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, I work from home, so every, it's going to like the grocery store, going to pick up bread or whatever. It's just like, yeah, take the touring. Why not? Yeah. You know? It's curbside pickup anyways for most of these things. So it's like, yeah, I'll just, I'll just take the touring. And I'm like, I probably should drive this BMW before like the battery dies on me or something. When I drive like press cars, you know, for, you know, $400,000 supercars as press cars are, I just, I use them for everything. Yeah. And they're so easy that it's like, if you bought this, why wouldn't you just use it for everything? Yeah. It's like not a sacrifice anymore. No. Whereas my old cars, if I use them for everything, I'm pretty tired at the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoy it, but like I'm pretty tired of what I'm you know, heavy heavy clutches and uh, stuff. Yeah, it's like you know, it's a manual and it's such an easy manual. Easy. The clutch is light and it's <laughs> just everything's just so so everything works. It's a Porsche, so it just works. Uh 
But yeah, I mean, you know, I see some of the things you're buying. You so just like with the watches, you've been through all the cars, and then you figured out exactly what you like. You like these old classic yeah. supercars, 1986 to yeah. 1989 supercars, and it's awesome because you'll never lose a dollar on them. You'll probably make money off of them, and maybe we'll see. They have all the character in the world. <laughs> we'll see. I'm going to enjoy driving them. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. So how's that? How, it's a 328, right? Yeah, I always get rules. that confused with the 308. Yeah, similar. Just yeah. A, uh, just update an 80s update. Uh, it's fucking good. A bit more cocaine in the cushions. A little bit, a little bit. You know? Easier, easier trays. Um, right. <laughs> no, no, it's sweet. It's uh, it's it's tuned up, and I've been driving the shit out of it. And I had a good long, hundred and fifty mile day last weekend with it. So how is that in that car? That's fucking good. Yeah, yeah. Driving one hundred and fifty miles through the canyons is like and and up and around and down PZ. Like that's easy as pie. That's nothing. It's just, What's exhausting is driving to Beverly Hills from right, here, right, right, light to light because yeah. it's just it's you know it's not meant for that. No. Um, and it's don't get me wrong, it's fine. It's not the worst, but you know it's just kind of the, with the dog leg gearbox. Yeah, oh, you shit. know the one. What what's oh shit? We Broadcasting not? error connection closed by the server. Oh. Are we gone? Are we still recording? It says, uh, I'm going to continue recording. Did this happen last time as well? <laughs> I'm no. just See, bad look, luck for this. Pink. Oh, and, and look who it is. Yeah. What's up? Um, I don't know if he's, uh, are we there? Hang on. Do we, did we die? I hope not. I, mean, I literally didn't change anything. Uh oh. How, how long is the chat? It doesn't say down. Are we up? Are we down? What is the status? Oh, stream finished. Yeah. Oh, fuck me. Wow. Great job, everyone. Can, uh, <laughs> shit. So okay. can you just go live again? Wait, can you? Yeah, I got to create a new event real quick. Well, can we also just can we also just continue recording and uh, answer our questions into the recording? I and believe apolog so. Apologize to the live people for, we don't need you to make a whole new live show right now, especially before we got... As long, I mean, I'm recording the audio backup, which is good. Um, yeah, let me go find, talk amongst yourselves. I'll find the questions and we'll do that. Okay. Um, A12 super fast. Is it silly I to recommend. get out of the Performante to get into an A12? No, that's the next level of crazy up. Yeah, you yeah. think so? They're just very expensive. They, they are. Yeah. They are. I would, I, you know, even, it's you know, you've probably noticed, but the prices on everything have gone up. Yeah. Which is crazy. Because people who have money and can't spend it in all the ways they'd like to. And then they've got cars. access to good loans. I mean, I got, I mm -hmm. got, that's why I got a, a pretty good deal on that touring, actually. And Sweet. like cheap money. So, yeah, um, that helps. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, if you, if you have a little bit to spend, then it's a good time. But then the competition's crazy. And so I if would, you probably, don't want to own a McLaren. Yeah. You've already had a 488. You've already had a Cayman. you Already had a GT3. What? Oh, that was Adam Ferrara. Yeah, I mean, a front engine Ferrari is your logical next step there. Yeah, you think? Or something old. Some, something old's interesting, but I also feel like you need to have knowledge. Not or, true. Or people. Who Not have true. Knowledge. You just have to have one person who knows what they're doing. Mm hmm. Uh, to help you find the good car, and then one person who knows what they're doing, that you are prepared to spend a reasonable amount of money for them to go through it, find and fix everything so that it's ready to drive a lot, yeah. and then start driving it a lot. I have no mechanical knowledge. I have but mechanical no, but you have, sympathy. You have, you, but, and you have friends or, or shops or whatever that, that take care of stuff for you. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, but nothing that no one doesn't have access to. Right, right, I have right. I uh, just from I, – I, and I could recommend – I mean, I, I have a, a Porsche guy I like, Marco at TLG, my, the Lamborghini people I like, GTO on, on La Cienega, and then Donnie, my Ferrari guy. But, like, these are just smart people that know their craft, and I go, listen, go through the car, and whatever's wrong with it, fix it because I don't want to be stranded on the side of the road. Right. And that has worked out for me. So because I know you, I could get into old cars. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> um, old Porsches are pretty much the easiest uh, because they are the least likely to leave you stranded. Yep. Because you pretty much eliminate overheating and coolant related issues, coolant hoses. You eliminate all that with an air-cooled Porsche. Oh, okay. That's why they work so well in California. Because, yeah, because it's hot, and it ta it takes so much to overheat a Porsche. Wow. Yeah. Like, you, you have to, like, 
I always assumed that those older ones were kind of uh, unreliable. No, Again, this I have is why no people, knowledge. I have no, no, this knowledge. is why people drive old air cooled shit in hot climates oh. because it's almost impossible to overheat them if, as long as you keep oil in the car, and because the hose, there's no hoses to dry, dry out and dry rot. Right. So you don't burst hoses and shit. It's a lot less rubber. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why air that's, cooled that's works so air, good. That's where air cooled is actually yeah, better. So yeah. So you can, if you buy an air cooled car. And it's not leaking oil, and it's not burning oil. You're pretty much fucking good to go. And and, and your safari's been. Well, I had to do a big service on it that costs a lot of money, but since then, I'm fully confident I would drive it anywhere, anytime. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good to know. They the big services are at the hundred thousand miles, right? So if you see a car with like. 90 something thousand miles on it. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a good deal because it's going to need a $15,000, right. you know, top end. So mm. it needs a $15,000 service every hundred and then an like an eighteen, nineteen thousand dollars $19,000 service every 200. And then those this are the is, big services. This is that famed engine out service with the with the Ferraris as well. Like you hear about like those services every year. But way more frequently. Yeah, like Ferrari. three years or something. Yeah, way like more frequently right. with uh, and and for those those engine outs that are the really scary ones, yeah. you're talking about the three fifty five, you're talking about um Testarossa. Testarossa, mm -hmm. five twelve boxer, mm -hmm. uh, and you're talking mm -hmm. about Mondial T. It, and F40 and F50. So your, yours doesn't have My it. Ferrari is a transverse engine, not a longitudinal engine. Oh. So you can do the belts and everything with the engine in the car. So it was just because it was longitudinal and they couldn't it, reach it. And the belts are against the seats. Right. So you have to take the whole shit out to do it. Why did they do that? <laughs> well, for other reasons that makes all kinds of sense, yeah. but because because of how the gearbox goes and all kinds of... Because the gearbox goes one and way. Also and also because, fuck you, it's a Ferrari. Deal with it. Like So if... If they did it the other way, the engine would be further in the back like Porsche has oh, it. Oh, I see. So now you've got a rear engine car. For a mid-engine car, you spin it around. Lamborghinis, Countach, same way, chains. Right. Timing chains instead of timing belts. You so don't have to change I've it. Heard, I've heard that, that if they just use chain. Correct. If you just but use chains. But they didn't. I don't know why. <laughs> in the 360, still uses belts, but they put an access panel to oh. get at it from the cabin. So as of 360, you're good. Yeah, yeah, and anything. Yeah, it's it's three fifty five, three forty eight, Mondi LT, F forty, F fifty, Testarossa five twelve. Those are your scary engine. I might be oh, missing well, I guess one, I but I'm pretty sure that's it. I won't get the F forty or F fifty then. That's good to know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in my, terms of maintenance, <laughs> in terms of maintenance, it's F fifty, three fifty five, F forty. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. That's you know yeah. well now now that's a case for the F40 yeah. and they made way more than you know people thought they did. F40 so uh, US spec is not bad because the the F40 I mean obviously the service is going to be crazy expensive right yeah but the nasty nasty bit is they they in the Euro cars they had these fuel bladders they're like bags of fuel oh. and they deteriorate and they need to be replaced every ten years and they're tens of thousands of dollars US spec cars proper aluminum fuel tank. No lifetime problem. yeah no problem so that is the car that if i had if i had the money the means course. that is the one fuck yeah specifically that car yeah. you, you get an f40 yes i'm surprised well it's a car that why why that car though because Most that's a car like that, them. <laughs> yeah i know right <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay it took me a second there <laughs> but, uh, no but because i had i had a model like a, a f40 model and like what that's what started the the journey would be like kind of yeah I mean, they're, they're crazy Wow. Yeah, they're fucking super, super cool. But and it's I, the only instance where everyone's like, oh, the Euro spec, the Euro spec. You want the Euro so spec. The, the bumper It's the only stuff. time when you want the U.S. Yeah. spec car. Ferrari it's, Steve, um, do you remember that guy? He built, I think. Steve Maxwell down yeah. in San Diego. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so he built the, the Starlet with like the bike engine in the back. Yeah, and yeah. So he, but he's like a Ferrari fabricator, and he was replacing one of the bladders in a Ferrari for somebody. Yeah. And he was, and his Instagram story was hilarious about the nightmare it was. He's like, now I've got a fishing rod. Now I've got a hook. He's trying to pull this bag out of something. And then he just, he lays it out on the ground. He's like, look how stupid this is. This is just. <laughs> they were doing it like the F1 cars probably. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, but if it deteriorates and falls apart well, now. In the F1 cars, that's not a problem. Oh my but God. like, yeah, Jesus. You know, it's like throwing a bunch of bread into like five black garbage bags <laughs> and then stuffing them in a car. And like, now find all the bread. <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, the U.S., but the, some of them got the motorized seat belts, the U.S. cars. Oh, really? The good tanks. I remember the those. Belts. I, that, that, that bring back memories. Donnie's Testarossa is a U.S. spec car, and it's got motorized seat belts. It's very funny. That's, that's, 
that's eighties car to me. Oh yeah, that's oh, what, yeah. Like, just it's, I don't know. I, I wouldn't be mad. Did your at parents that. have a car that had a had no? And I was mad. Belts? I was mad. I was like, I was like, <laughs> mom. I always thought it was <laughs> so cool. You. I thought it was so cool because <laughs> because growing up uh, they had a, an Acura Integra. Those are good. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was a good car. Yeah. Them, but right? the Legend, I think, had that. And my dad wanted the Legend, but we couldn't afford the it. The Legend it was, was the a, shit. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That was uh, that was when Acuras were fucking cool. The Legend was dope. My mom had multiple vehicles with power belts. Because yeah. a lot of American cars, we and my friends had a uh, Lincoln Mercury dealership, so we had a lot of Mercuries. And they all, from like 87 to... 96 or whatever it was had the power belts and then just one day it stopped they were just like you could just every once in a while they were like guys this is dumb yeah <laughs> eventually just... they were like this is more dangerous than it is it probably breaks all the time like probably yeah i mean costs. you could probably like, get like... trapped <laughs> uh, right uh, yeah yeah people yeah. just said fuck it and just disconnected it entirely right I mean, right right i don't understand what the advantage was because you still had to put on the lap belt so you still had to click a belt on yeah and then it just went across your shoulder but when you do a three-point belt you put it on you still have to click a thing like it doesn't say you I think it was supposed time. to remind you to put the rest of your seatbelt on. Okay. <laughs> it was, it was like that era. Yeah, it was like people like... didn't want to put their belts on, and uh, this sort of made this you. This is our transition from no is... one putting belts on. Right. Yeah. And now, I've never... Yeah. I've never experienced it. Like for me, it's always like it's like you never experienced the joy of a power belt or the a, the phenomenon of people not wanting to wear that. Yeah, the ph- phenomenon of that. Like it's I like get you it just either. wear your seatbelt. Like, I don't even 60s, think about it. Some cars didn't even come with the belts. I know, I know. And That's then they put saying. the lap belts in. They're like fine, but it's so like a dangerous. big deal. It's like so vaccines, dangerous. you know. Yeah. One of my customers <laughs> has an old Mercedes 190 Roadster, little from the 50s, and he's got, he's going, yeah, I gotta get the retrofit seatbelts. No one wants to come for a ride with me. Cause it's got no seatbelts. No one wants to come out. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll, I'd have a, like even in like a parking lot, I'll do it. Like I just have anxiety about. Yeah, that. I'm just like, well, what if a? Yeah, here's there's accidents in parking lots. You know, you know, like, it's all about. You know, people get scared of anecdotal evidence. Yeah. It's like the same kind of thing who people who think, oh, lane splitting must be so dangerous. Mm. Meanwhile, motorcycle deaths are substantially lower in California where lane splitting is allowed than other places where it's not. Interesting. Because the truth is most motorcycle on car accidents are not uh, hitting from the side. Most motorcycle on car accidents are getting crushed or rear-ended in between two cars at lights where someone approaching a red light at night can't tell that there's a car with a motorcycle behind it oh. and they just crash in. And so that's actually the the, the, the great percentage of accidents. It's so not lane splitting puts you in the right spot. Basically. Lane sp- splitting puts you ahead of those back vehicles, right. you know, at the right. light so they won't crash into you. Huh. It's under- but. <laughs> Right. So I, same thing with the non seatbelt crowd. I dated a girl once who refused to wear a seatbelt. This was like a long time ago. Well, why is that? Well, because she knew somebody that got into an accident and somehow got trapped because of the seatbelt. Uh, oh no, no, they went no. Because her father wasn't wearing a seatbelt, he got thrown free of a fire or something. Like one person right. happened to survive because the seatbelt. Right. Right. Yeah, right. And it, that formed the opinion. Yeah, well, I like when the anecdote forms the permanent opinion. That's that's always it's always a, a bad time. Uh, oh, well, we got what is that? So I got these are our super chats. Um, we only have a little. Oh, I bit didn't of time. know you could get like that window. Uh, we only have a little bit of time left, so we should probably jump okay. to these. All I right. do have I do have one bombshell I wanted to drop on oh, you guys. Oh sure. I be, uh, and this, you're pregnant. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. You can tell. We come, um, but. In the interest of modern and old, I have been looking at singers. Am I stupid for looking at singers? No, uh, you're just amazing. way richer than I thought. No, you were. I'm not. I'm not. No, 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 no. Because I saw the price sheet. I thought yeah. they were a certain price, They're and not. then I saw with the options. I'm like, okay, I can't get this now. But is it something I should aspire to, or is that like just an insane oh, way to spend your money, or both? Both. 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 Yeah. Both. Yeah, because because I <laughs> nobody gets a base model singer though. No, no, and I was looking at the options. I'm like, yeah. oh, you guys are clever. Yeah, but like, <laughs> <laughs> like everything that every pre, you know press shot, it's got all these options. Right. You know? uh, anyways, and like, when their tagline is "everything is important," you right. go, Well, I can't not get the double stitched right. cup holder. So now you're looking at a substantially more expensive car, yeah. and so I can't yeah. I can't justify it right now. But also. Even if I ordered it now, it wouldn't be ready for like three, four years. Right. True. So I'm kind of just doing some math in my head. Can you do deposits to get in line? Yeah, it's a substantial deposit to get in line, and then you have you have payment periods, mm. or whatever. Oh. But here's the oh thing: boy. 
Oh, Here, boy. Oh, well, I want, Don't I want to do see, that. I want to see Don't my, do that. I mean, that's how. No, that's how you. That's how you pay them. That's like that's how everyone pays them. There's oh, really? Like, there's three easy payments and like yeah, three easy payments. And then the final balance, forty-seven thousand dollars. Yeah. And then there's the then there's the balance at the end for the options. Can or you whatever. lease one? <laughs> Twenty-five G's a month. Um, Hundred down. Wow. But but the 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 thing is that like I also know that people are selling them for way more. Yeah. So now I'm mm -hmm. like this is like a house <laughs> because the kind of people who can afford a singer also would like to not wait for three years to right. get one, and right. they have and if they have to pay three or four times as much, it doesn't matter. So there I'm like there I'm like maybe not the worst place to put my money for a few years. Well, you yeah, know? but, but it, it's the not the worst place to put your money. If you can jump the line and get it now, if you have to be the one of the people who waits three years, then yeah. you have no idea. Well, no, I think the, the demand may be, be satisfied. You're going right. to deposit. You're going to do all the payments. You're going to put the money down. You're going to wait the three years. Yep. Then you're going to drive it. And your whole plan this time is going to go, I'm going to drive for a month and I'll flip it for four, t four X, right? But then you, Misha, are going to drive it and love it. And you go, no, I, I don't want to flip it. I don't want to flip it. I don't want to flip it. No, no, okay. no, no, no. I don't want to flip it. But I do love then you need the to go security. On the security of if ever everything goes wrong, which I think is going to happen tomorrow, no matter what, then I can sell it and not lose, not take a bath on it, and maybe even potentially make a little bit off of it. But that's I not mean, the plan. Hmm. But okay, judging by your guys' reaction, I should hold off. Uh, we just know that concerts aren't happening right now, yeah. and yeah. you're talking about buying a thank five, God, six Thank God, God my band is not the way I make my money. That's a good that's point. True. The band is the, a passion uh, project. <laughs> I think for that kind of money. You could buy an, a 993 GT2, yeah. a real one, yeah. and drive that <laughs> on the street, and then re and then sell that, and that's a, that's a, a fully known quantity. Mm -hmm. And then it's mm -hmm. not like, well, Misha wants a singer in a uh, fucking Viper Green, right. but but maybe the next owner doesn't want the singer in Viper Green. Right, right, you right. know what I mean? You're tempted to. To communicate the value, you know what I mean. Not yeah. every yeah. singer has an equal amount of resale right. value, a, you and you wouldn't. Careful. Yeah, and you wouldn't want to. You don't want to go through all that bullshit to spec the next guy's singer. True, true. You know, true. whereas you can buy for for singer money, bro. You're in that F forty. Uh yeah, but, but no money in money out. You might money be. in money out. Yes, you might be. <laughs> or you're, or you're you in a nine nine three timeshare in F forty. Time row. Time share. half and half. Man. <sighs> Plan Z and F forty. I mean, years of turning. I'm half yeah. serious. No, I got, I'm out of money. I have no money left. I just paid Donnie. I have no money left. I'm out. Um, no, but but I, I I definitely I definitely see your point. And then there's also you drove this the nine nine seven four zero. Oh, well, that's lovely as well. That's, but, but is that kind of just the same ground? That's the, a bit fucking, of the same. That thing's the best. Um, as the, as the four touring. liter. <laughs> uh, as something to put miles on. Yeah. That's the other thing is I I'm going to put miles on whatever I think putting I miles on it would take value off of it. And that va is a lot of what you're paying for. Right. You could you could get a car that felt substantially similar to that. Like a Touring? Or a 997.2 <laughs> RS, a regular oh, one. Oh, a regular one. You know, and with an exhaust and a couple of little mods, and you could have a car that's like – way less of an upfront investment yeah. and where miles are way less important to your long-term value. Well, uh, my parents are going to be very happy that we had this conversation <laughs> because they, they were like, don't do that. Yeah, no, I mean, look, <laughs> if, you, if, I, if you got a singer, I'd just ask you to have a little quick go. But, <laughs> yeah. but uh, you know, it's, it's singers are for people that have like already had everything else. Yeah. And I think you have not gotten... I wouldn't make my first air-cooled Porsche a singer. Yep. Or even my second, third, or, like, fifth. I would make my, like, 30th air-cooled Porsche. <laughs> because, I mean, it's just, it's really? like it's like fucking getting this Rolex Explorer 2 from, from Crown & Caliber first. It's like you're, you're just starting it where you think will be the very best. As, What's wrong as a with that? Well... You skip all the steps. Right, yeah, you skip Plus, the steps. Plus, there's but always starting a million there's dollars always and then zone high, high, high six that, figures. That's the problem with it. The, the, the quality side of it is great because you're like, look, this looks amazing. I think they're great because they look unique. Each one looks a little different. They look special. And the performance is insane. But I just but, think there's a lot of fun to be had 
for way less money, mm. way I, less true, money, in a totally safe investment. Yeah. And thinking about the flip market when buying a singer. Eh. I, I'm not. I'm not thinking about the flip market. It's just more like. I could probably make my money back. Yeah, yeah, but you could also buy a bunch of cool air cooled yeah. shit and make your money back. Yeah, or a 458 Speciale. Yeah, that too. Or that. Maybe if you bought it right. Some some people a couple of years ago thought they were like here and they're really here. Yeah, uh, but they're lovely. That's when that's when I get. They are fabulous. But I can't put miles on that. Anyways, I didn't mean to. I know people are asking. No, questions. that was a good topic. There you go. Just, uh, oh. And I oh. appreciate the advice. I trust you guys. You guys, you guys have always informed my decisions. I just don't want you to so to put. To, to start there. Okay, that's fair. That's but, a good but point. But definitely get there. Yeah, definitely get, there. get there. But like, I Wait would... to like the fourth podcast and then... No, like, <laughs> I would just like, I'd get one great 993 mm. first. Okay. Like, maybe even a 993 Turbo or something like that, like, like those something are, that's... Uh, those are hard to find, right? Nah. No? I mean, they're, no, there's, they made a lot of them. Okay. Yeah. They're not cheap, but they did make. Okay. They made enough of them okay. that you could pretty you could much buy, buy the one you want to buy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Freddie is. He's got a running McLaren LT. My man. Oh, it's running. It's running. Whoa, Alleg- that's, allegedly, that's a that's a long time coming. That's amazing. Congratulations. Uh, Yuri says just says Prowler, which is great. That's that's a. I that's mean, that's right. That's pretty much what Yuri has to contribute. No, yeah. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I posted that during the uh, convertible I, I, discussion. Oh, I just love that he got yeah. that car. That's Which, technically a speedster or a roadster, I would say. He's yeah. like, I think you should just get an open wheel convertible. But the thing is, the thing is, he got that car and it was like his dream car and he got it. And I would expect it to not live up to the hype because it's a prowler and he loves it. He and does. he dailies yeah. it and he, he drives it in the snow. On it. Yeah. Like That's I'm cool. like, man, That's you are you're cool. doing it right. He's yeah. living he's living the dream. Snow tires are our boss is fucking that. I love it. Uh Maddie. Blah, 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 blah. Wants to know scale of one to ten. How dumb of an idea is it to own a Toyota Chaser in upstate New York winters? Previously had an E36 that handled fine on snow tires, but with more power. Eh? I don't know. I think I think same strategy applies. Snow tires. Snow tires fixes everything. I don't see. I mean, that would be great. I think it could be wheel fun. Wheel drive. Yeah, yeah, it could when be. Was fun. the last time you had to put snow tires on anything? I have snow tires for my safari that I put on when I go to Mammoth, but that's about it. Yeah, that, yeah. that makes sense. Well, I don't know. I live in, that's why I live here. <laughs> yeah. I live here to not put snow tires no, on my shit. Uh, Laurel says, do we think the Elva hype will encourage more manufacturers to prefer pursue affordable open cockpit models like Caterham and Morgan? So the Elva's the McLaren with no windshield. Yeah, I saw, I, uh, I saw when uh, Johnny had. Yeah, it looks insane. It looks like a concept that doesn't run. Like a Can Am concept. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had to go in it as well. My story's for next month's road and track. It's oh. really crazy. I don't think you can mass produce it. I think uh, both of the examples that that they've got, Caterham and Morgan, and the example of the Elva would fall under ultra low volume vehicle. Where you don't ask act. a bunch of questions <laughs> because there's like fifteen of them. Yeah. yeah. AKA yeah. we're not building too many of these things, so let us have it. Just okay. The, like it's not worth the trouble. Right. Once so, you start to mass produce, it'll be like So that's terrible. why I think the answer sadly is no, although yeah. I think it would be amazing if there were more open cockpit kind of speed street wild. cars like they, that. It yeah. also isn't the first open cockpit thing. You know, like Mercedes has done it, Ferrari's mm-hmm. done it recently. So it's not a trend they started so if Caterham and Lotus and them haven't done it yet you know there's a reason and you want to open cockpit get a aerial atom yeah yeah, yeah. also <laughs> yeah low volume same you know same yeah. all that all that, that stuff is. experience yeah. and if I was gonna get any of that stuff I get BAC mono anyways so they're fucking yeah. crazy yeah. uh Misha will Sergio succeed at Red Bull this year uh I am so interested so you know about this like like Sergio Checo Perez like almost didn't have a drive he got kicked out by strolling sons basically uh, I did hear that much, yeah yes. and uh, and at the last minute he took Alex Alex Albin's place and here's the thing uh, I don't know if you guys have been following Max Verstappen may be the most talented guy on the grid and it's very hard to tell because all these cars are just different you know yeah. so so Max is so good that he's destroyed the career of of his teammates mm-hmm. over and over and in fact he had Pierre Gasly, who then went back to the, the feeder team and dominated. Right. So you know that he's a good driver, but just compare, comparatively, like, no one can hang. The only guy who's been able to hang is Daniel Ricciardo, who's gone. And since then, they have had a hell of a time finding a driver who can keep up. And it's going to be interesting. That, now, Sergio will be the third driver, and we all know he's sick. He's really sick, consistent, 
And it's going to be interesting. It's going to tell so much. If he does well, that means, yeah, he's at a different level. If he struggles, that means there's a Red Bull problem, and it's a really big Red Bull problem. Right. And, wow. and it's it's kind of showing their hand a little bit, but they didn't really have a lot of options. So I am i don't have the answer. I hope he does well because it probably will be a better outcome for everyone. But, um, yeah, that's that's what I'm hoping. Perfect. Uh MDK Kaiser, any interest in vintage guitars? You know, I just never got into vintage things so much. And maybe it's something I'll get into, but like, you know, you have your your older cars or whatever. It's its own scene. It's the same thing with these instruments. And dude, the the prices That's a deep dark hole. It yeah, is. Yeah. Uh, my business partner at Horizon Devices went through that phase mm-hmm. and spent insane amounts of money and made even more. There's a lot to be made, but you have to know your shit. Yeah. And just like with everything else, you have a lot to, of fake. A lot. You have to yeah. authenticate. If you, oh, and God forbid it's a real one, but someone, you know, wanted to refinish it in the mm-hmm. 70s and mm-hmm. now it's worth it. You know, it's like there's a lot of shit there and I just haven't gone into that. I don't need another fucking Maybe rabbit hole. Maybe it's for the best. It's for the best. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and plus, with watches. Besides, when you got, I mean, you literally have your own guitar. <laughs> yeah. When you have your own mo- make and model guitar, that's pretty awesome. It, it is, but it's kind of, I'm kind of. Like, you know, all the stuff you're getting now is interesting, quirky stuff. Mm-hmm. Because you've driven every supercar. You're good. I just I'm, know I can't play that game. I can't keep up with I can't play the game you're playing. Well, I mean, yeah. Because I, I get too many tastes and I want too much. Yeah. I, I like to exit <laughs> myself from that ecosystem. I have I have a bit of that problem, too. <laughs> but with the guitar, I'm good on, like, these modern yeah. guitars. So now I only like weird, quirky things. Oh, and cool. That's, yeah. It's kind of the same thing. That makes sense. Uh, Amir wants to know what I want, what we want to see from Chrysler and Stellantis going forward. I don't know what that is. What's Stellantis? Stellantis is the new name for the Fiat Chrysler conglomerate. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. St- God, naming things is really hard, and they haven't really succeeded, have they? <laughs> Getting a global trademark is very difficult because you have to get it approved in every, every country. So, so that Stellantis you're is like in. the last word that wasn't taken. So, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, Dodge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah it's they're like all now they Stellantis. just you're, they're going through like the Latin dictionary is usually where yeah, they're you just find having stuff AI like that. just come up with words. It that sounds barely like a city exists. that's underneath the ocean, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, related to Atlantis. Atlantis, but not it's exactly. That, it's a competitor. Yeah, it's the hipster Atlantis <laughs> yeah. is what it is. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's, it's Atlantis is Brooklyn. Oh, it's not. It's not Atlantis. It's the Eiffel Tower in Vegas. <laughs> uh, I'd like to see their most exciting product not have a Hellcat engine in it. Yeah. It'd be, it'd be That's nice a for goal. Them to do something else. I would like to see that minivan. I'm sorry. The Hellcat I wanna, minivan. I want to see the. Hell, I I I kind of dig that. I realize like I they've miss already minivans. put in everything else. Yeah, might, might as, as well. well. Might as well. How is any other thing that they've done any more absurd or any less absurd? It's not. Like, oh yeah, SUV. Let's put 700 horsepower engine. It, like that made sense, and then they sold a ton. Do a minivan. No, no. The only reason it, that it makes less sense than that, I think, is because uh, Mercedes proved long ago that the market for a fast minivan is like really small. Yeah. And yeah. everyone's buying SUVs now. Yeah. And I think the person that has the attitude that would buy the supercharged SUV is is like, I'm not buying a minivan. Those are stupid, even though if they're a superior vehicle. Yeah. So that would be the problem. And yeah. then there's the wagons. Awesome. Then you just go to the wagon instead. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Which is um, what I would do. Lewis, I asked. I, I don't think you asked this question last week, but I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure we answered this question on a oh, recent yeah. show. Why does Tag Heuer get a lot of uh, guff from watch snobs? Because we don't like their designs and watches. That's why. Yeah. There's only one that I like, which is that that cheap tourbillon. They make like a hundred watches, and like four of them are good. Yeah, I, I think that's cool, and it pissed everyone off because it's like a tourbillon for like fifteen grand. Yeah, you know, it's that's probably cool. mass produced. You know, it is definitely handmade, but you know, I think um, that's kind of cool. Dominic wants to know suggestions for books to improve your driving. Uh, Ross Bentley, Speed Secrets. Yep, that's a really good one. Um, Twist of the Wrist is a motorcycle book, but it applies pretty well to cars. I should read this. Recommend that. <laughs> Twist of the Wrist is very good, yeah. Um, I've been reading uh, Tune to Win, which is more about suspension setup and tires, but it has helped me understand a lot of things about driving, too. But it reads like a textbook, mm-hmm. so it's, it's a little dull. Were there any other questions up there that were Misha specific, or, or no? We... That's all we had from today. The oh, others okay. were old. Oh, ones. old. All right, yeah. great. Well, we're right on time then. Ugh, I hate having to go back to. I mean, I like my job, like my day job, and dealing with you know customers and stuff. They're very nice. Cars coming in, cars going out. That means money's happening and things. But it's getting a little difficult to schedule podcasts around these things. So yeah, your job became a job. Well, only two days a week. Right. Eric's really got it on lockdown the rest of the time. I mean, which is fine. As I was saying, this place is like 
it's like a dream for me. I know for me you, too, this dude. is just this is like just where you work now. No, no, it's no. Like, this is cool. I know this is cool. Yeah, this is unreal. Like That's being in awesome. that room and seeing those cars, it it makes it makes my ten year old self like just freak out. Me too. You it's know? super fun. Yeah, it's really fun. Just everywhere you look, it's like oh my god. Like, yeah. Like, but you still what you you still have you know customers. You got to be right. You got to of course. Gotta help. Of it's, course. All. it's a business. It's a it business. just means you can't do radio like all day. Yep. Sometimes. Yep. Well, it's okay. Thanks, Misha. Thanks for having nice me. To see you, man. I can't wait yeah. to see what uh, what watch you end up uh, with. And yeah. what your next car is. I'll, I'll keep you updated. Yeah, right. Oh, God. Dude, this, <laughs> the singers. I have a problem. Singer, yeah, I have you a do. problem, and you guys are here to keep me grounded. You know, you're, you're already doing a good get job. Get a singer. I said no, get it's, a singer. Yeah, oh, no, yeah, 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 yeah. Do it. So you said, you said <laughs> get it, but just eventually. Very, and very eventually. And yeah. a little bit I'm just eventually. saying, I don't think it should be your first air-cooled car. That's Because I think there's a lot of good stuff in between that'll be money in, money out. That's a very, that's a very fair you point. You know what's funny? You could buy a Joey Seeley's Project Nasty and save money compared to a singer, and that shit ain't cheap. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. I don't know what that is. Is he selling that? Is it, still, is it for sales? I don't know if it's for sale but uh our friend joey that. built this crazy ass super lightweight um narrow body car with like a giant engine and he does and chassis setup for gt3 cars and oh. various 911s so he knows his um stuff. so yeah, yeah he really knows his stuff and so he this was his car that he built and it just was like a long term passion yeah, that, project. I drove it. It was really, really, really fast. And it, Matt drove it. You drove it a few years ago, and then and now it weighs like twenty one hundred pounds, and it used to weigh like twenty six. You know, the engine. It's the whole thing is insane. It's add, very light. Add lightness. Yeah, it's really, really cool. Nice Man, car. That's. I think that's he. Awesome. I heard he was selling it. I think he wants a lot of money, <laughs> but maybe it's just like. Oh, honey, it's for sale. You know, it's one of those yeah. things. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, he. When I talked to him, he wanted to sell it, but he put he's put a lot of work into it, and it's also his baby. So of course he wants he wants a lot of money, and it's it's really yeah. fucking fast. It's kind of one of a kind as well, you know. Oh yeah. So yeah, you know, and it's pretty well known. Yeah. Um, do you have anything to like plug? Are you just chilling. No, just chilling. Great. Just chilling. Great. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> Come back soon. Thanks for thanks for having me, guys. Mm -hmm. It's always a pleasure. Mm -hmm. And now you get to see all the comedians in Texas. Wow, wow. Sucks yeah, to be true. us. You guys come visit me us. next time. I know, right? Yeah. I gotta get. I gotta get to fucking Austin. Yeah. I really do. Um, thanks for joining us, man. Yep. Go pick up the latest Periphery record. Yeah, why not? Why not? Why not? Why go, not? Pick up a record. Just go to a YouTube. Pick up a record. Go to Spotify How or whatever. Do I, I sound right? fucking. Ancient. I have records. I don't think a lot of these people. Have. I bet you these folks have. Maybe records. they do. There's record. Do. Yeah. There's people. Uh, I mean, I talked about a notebook in something, and it was, "What pen do you use? Tell me about your pen." Okay, pick Mecha up a record. <laughs> mechanical keyboards and fountain pens. We have vinyl. Fucking so. <laughs> nerds. Yeah, this is a nerd show. <laughs> it is. All right, guys. I'll see y'all. Uh, are we, is it tomorrow? Tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow with Jay Zagamisa. Virtual. Yep. Calling yeah. from San Francisco. Jay Zagamisa will be on the show. Come join us. Goodbye. <laughs>